time to go over some of the finer details. Bad Definitely Lieutenant not. Port of Call New Orleans was released on November 20th, 2009. Had a budget of $25 million and it made 10.6. So Ooh, definitely a flop. back in the right a little bit. Even the original was, you know, <laughs> super controversial at the time, and I don't think it made back its budget either. I don't even know why. Like, so it developed a reputation. Bad Lieutenant did um, because it's a really messed up movie, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it was NC seventeen. It was one of the first like NC seventeen major releases. So using that name, I think m- maybe was a detriment. Or I don't and maybe like uh, it's the only thing that put it on the radar for some people. I have no idea. I don't know yeah, what the yeah. uh, logic is. We'll we'll get into it. But there was like even Werner Herzog was like, no, we shouldn't call it Bad <laughs> Lieutenant. <laughs> uh, as we said, directed by the legendary German director Werner Herzog, who is uh, he's mostly famous for documentaries. He's got the craziest voice ever. Um, just, just, and then just the way he talks is so like flowery, like, mm-hmm. like that. I don't know if you guys saw that penguin nihilist penguin videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why does he walk into the into the interior of Antarctica <laughs> just to so die? <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. To die. He also has one talking about how stupid chickens are. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, ones about how like the, the the ambient sounds of the jungle are just like death on a massive scale. Like it's just the sounds of all these animals dying around you <laughs> at all times. <laughs> Jesus. He's kind of like the Leonard Cohen of directors, where it's like it always goes in a dark place. I so love I, that penguin one because he's like trying to get the penguin naturalists to like agree with him that this is a nihilist penguin who's going off to commit suicide, and the guy's just kind of like. Clearly no. uncomfortable with being like no, and then he's just maybe he's just going over there. Even if we picked him up and brought him back to the beach, he would still just turn around and walk right back to the mountains. <laughs> uh, I would say, like most people who don't watch like cult classics and and go deeper into cinema, wouldn't recognize him outside of. Um, Potentially his acclaimed documentary, The Grizzly Man, which actually was a pretty popular one. I feel like that was maybe his most uh, recognizable uh, documentary that he's made about, uh, mm-hmm. uh, I forget his first name, but Treadwell, um, the guy who who spent his whole life trying to conserve the uh, grizzly population. They ended up being eaten <laughs> by a grizzly, um, him and mm-hmm. his girlfriend. Uh, it's a pretty, it's a fascinating, fascinating documentary. If you ever have time, <laughs> uh, just yeah. listening to Werner Herzog describe why a man would uh, choose to be eaten by a grizzly bear to save his girlfriend is fascinating. <laughs> just listening to the way he describes it. Uh, he was also the bad guy in Jack Reacher, which I, ha- I haven't actually watched Jack Reacher, but I watched a little clip and I was like, because I was like, Werner Herzog's in this? Is he like a bit part? And I watched and no, he's like, he's like the main bad guy who sends out all the mm-hmm. other bad guys. Mm-hmm. And he sounds just as evil as you would exactly expect. Exactly the same, yeah. He did yeah, a good then, job in that movie. <laughs> oh, you saw it? Yeah, yeah, I watched the first one. Yeah, he did a good job. He's interesting. And then uh, potentially the most recognizable part that he's ever had as an actor was uh, the baby Yoda snatcher in The Mandalorian. Yeah. Show, me the the baby. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the baby. Show me the baby. There's stories of him on the set, like only referring to the puppet as a real thing, like acting completely <laughs> on and off camera that the baby Yoda was a real puppet, like a real yeah. character. I don't know. A real child. <laughs> it seems... And like chastising the other crew for not treating it with the respect that it should have because it's a little baby. (laughs) Please respect the baby. It might get into its pod and go into the vast interior of Tatooine. (laughs) Uh, This was written by William N. Finkelstein, who uh, had only done uh, TV cop dramas up to this point. Um, L.A. Law, uh, NYPD Blue, The Good Fight, (laughs) and Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans, uh, is the only film that he's ever made outside of, like, 
made for TV movies that uh, were related to other TV shows that he was working on. And still to this day, it's the only film that he's ever worked on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll get into it. But <laughs> uh, it's shot by Peter Zeitlinger, who only pretty much works with Herzog. He's worked on almost everything that uh, that Werner Herzog has ever done. But most <laughs> recently, he started working with James Franco on some of his post allegation movies that nobody is watching because, <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know he was making anything. He's made yeah. a couple movies since the allegations, and uh, they were shot by Peter Zeitlinger. And uh, most recently, uh, we'll get into it in the quick facts. But there was a huge uh, public um, <laughs> rift between Werner Herzog and the original film's director Abel Ferrara, um, who made <laughs> uh, King of New York and. Uh, of course, the original Bad Lieutenant, but he just, uh, uh, Peter Zeitlinger, just recently shot a film with Abel Ferrara. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get into it, but uh, they buried the hatchet, Werner, Werner Herzog and him. Um, but he has been trying to do for like 10 years, trying to get in, in a room with uh, Abel Ferrara to explain, like, I did not mean to make you angry. For making this film, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was uh, edited by Joe Beanie, who uh, also is almost exclusive to uh, Werner Herzog. But um, he recently did. Uh, we need to talk about Kevin, um, American Honey, and You Were Never Really Here, which were uh, fairly like mainstream, um, bigger type films than what he would normally work on with Werner Herzog. And then the music was by the great Mark Isham. Who uh, uh, one of, he scored one of my favorites, uh, The Hitcher, which is this amazing film. It's just a hitchhiker is picked up. It's um, uh, Rudger Hauer gets picked up by C. Thomas Howell, and uh, he just <laughs> decides he's gonna try and get this guy to kill him uh, by killing <laughs> every person around him for the whole rest of the movie. And it's just it's spellbindingly amazing. Uh, go watch The Hitcher, <laughs> not the remake. Or the pseudo sequel, or whatever the hell that thing was, but the original '80s Hitcher, oh, so <laughs> good. Uh, also did the music for Point Break, um, A River Runs Through It, which he got an Oscar nomination for. Blade, The Mist, The Crazies, which is another one that's uh, one of my faves. Um, kind of a hidden gem. I don't know why that movie didn't get more uh, buzz than it did. I think it was because it was kind of it came out like right in the middle of the Walking Dead zombie craze and I, I feel like people were kind of over zombies already at that point but the crazies mm -hmm. is kind of kind of a a mix between like um uh 28 days later and and an actual zombie movie where it's like they just go crazy with rage and right now currently creating the music for the unbearable weight of massive talent which is the new nick cage movie where he plays himself hell yeah <laughs> So that'll be awesome right. to see a re-team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans, I have to say the whole name, every time. <laughs> <laughs> has a uh, Rotten Tomato score of 86%, uh, 7.2 out of 10 on 154 reviews, which wow. is ki kind of surprising. That's uh, pretty high for a what I f especially the ending. <laughs> we'll get into it. We didn't, we didn't love the ending of the film. I feel like that was the the thing that kind of knocks it down from like a six or a seven to yeah, it does a lower me. score. Yeah, yeah, Sam. Audience score was fifty seven percent, so substantially lower than the uh, the critics gave it. Uh, Metacritic score was sixty nine percent. <laughs> nice. Um, I, I am DB six point six out of ten. I feel like that one's pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Still a little too and, high, but yeah. And no cinema score, so it wasn't. I don't. I, I feel like it was released to theaters, but I don't think it was released wide enough for a cinema score. But that's pretty mixed. Like Rotten Tomatoes is so much higher. That's one of the big reasons I wanted to include other scores this season is because Rotten Tomatoes makes it seem like it's a masterpiece when you just look at eight point six or eight eighty six percent. Which is seven point two, which seven point two even just feels like, eh, might be giving it a little <laughs> bit too much. Six point six, I think, is like, eh, I can see that. Six, six or seven. Yeah. 